Well, uh, thank you for joining us. Let me say good morning to Nana Prajin Sem and uh, also to all your uh, chiefs in, in the Paramount Sea as well and all those great Central Region chiefs. Let me say good morning to all of you and also to the yeah, Agua Mafia of the Asogli State, Togbia Fede, and then also uh, Mama Wu, who is also one of the Queen Mothers of um, the Asogli State as well. Good morning to you, Chairman Godwin Tamakul Group, Chief Executive of the Rates Group, 10 years, uh, doing some great work when it comes to uh, oil transport and um, uh, and then also um, storage industry. Great, great initiative, all of you. We are here again to begin a great week. And as already prefaced in our earlier discussions, we encourage you to cash out. It goes with a short code star 439 hash. Make sure that you increase your chances of winning by choosing option two, TB3. And then when you click that, you're going to see the option for you to also increase the number of tickets you have. So five, you can do it 10, 11. And the good thing that has happened over the last week or two is that we've seen more winners and the increases in the numbers that are uh, that are winning and also the sum, that's the money they are winning that is credited into their mobile money account and that's a great one. And so let me just say that please make sure that you keep staking, star 439 has been cash out. For those who have joined us, we're grateful and um, I lost um, a former boss, Justice Mingo, one of uh, my early trainers at the Ghana Broadcasting Corporation. Rest in peace, Justice Mingo. Obrim Pong Kaba, Kwesi Mensah watching us from the United States of America. Mani ni mani. And uh, Nena, as well as all those who have joined us, Lauren Shama, uh, great one. Uh, Nelson Akotia, Sherry Giovanni, uh, Atu Kwe Kwe. And then also great people like Shaibu, Kwekweron, also join us from Kofia. Please share the stream. Let's have some great discussions. We're taking off from all that has transpired. Key points, the press conference from the NDC side of Parliament that was addressed by the leader uh, of the caucus. That's uh, Dr. Samuel Atu, uh, Dr. Kesiel Atu Forsen, so to speak. And... Um, us also here that what's the anticipation what do we expect the speaker uh, to be doing tomorrow what, what, what position should we expect him to take i have newly minted lawyer in the studio the last time i introduced him just about two weeks ago has to be exact i wasn't here the last week um i introduced him as quisi quating now he's legal practitioner Kwesi Kwating. So lawyer Kwesi Kwating, good morning to you. Congratulations on, on your call to the bar. Great work. Good morning, It takes a lot of sacrifice, as I know. Hey, thank you. Good morning, Roland, and good morning to my seniors. I right. We have, we have a very and then process. also, Edruji Tamaklo, legal practitioner as well. Edruji, how are you? Roland, I'm good. Mm -hmm. Good morning to my learned colleagues, and uh, um, good morning to our cherished viewers. I think that the country is at a point of crisis, and the crisis... You mean we're at a crossroad? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Apia Dankwa, lawyer, how are you? Yeah, are you ready for the court today? Or today, no, no, nothing to talk about in the court? Yeah, let me wish you a lovely view. Yes. Mm. A good morning. And my learned friends here, a good morning. Yourself, a good morning. Thank you. I have, I, have, I have some personal business to do. All right. Okay. We wish you all the best um, after the show uh, in your daily hustle to Eka Levin. But in the meantime, we'll take you through that. Uh, a number of uh, the orders of the Supreme Court. And they finally learned at that press conference that was organized by the NDC caucus in Parliament. And they call themselves the majority side of Parliament. We don't know what's going to prevail today. But in anticipation, we'll do a recall because according to the orders of the court, the execution of the ruling of the speaker, which of course we know was dated on the 17th of October, we brought that to you live, delivered on the floor of parliament, declaring vacant the seats of the following members of parliament here by state. And this is pending the final determination of the suit. And so the parliament of Ghana according to the Supreme Court of our country, is, di is directed to recognize and also allow the four affected members of parliament to duly represent their constituents and conduct the full scope of their duties of their offices as MPs pending the determination of the suits. If you indeed read 
the orders or the judgment of the courts, you also know that they cited uh, that, well, their constituent need not be denied representation in parliament. That was quite interesting, though, because in view of the gravity of the issues raised according to the courts in the suit and the agency of the matter, the court also directed that the Speaker of Parliament and the Attorney General are to file their statement of case within the seven days of service of this ruling. So the question then is, has the Speaker's office or Parliament been served onwardly to the Speaker? And the parties were then ordered to file their joint memos of issues within seven days of filing of their statement of case for the due hearing of the suits. On, on the other side, in terms of the public domain and also great discussions on, on the key point that was hosted by uh, Alfred Okanse over the weekend, you get to also find that the other side of the commentary has been how swiftly the Supreme Court empaneled to take a look at this amid other pending issues and perhaps a lot, uh, uh, some sense of laxity when it came to other issues as well. But the NDC side of the House, they call themselves the majority caucus, so to speak. And they address a press conference. Atu Kesil Forsen, and on, of course, governs Kwame Agboja also in the thick of affairs. In this eighth parliament, we will jealously protect our new majority status and will not bow, retreat, nor surrender our lawfully end status. We will also not abdicate our responsibility to the people of Ghana, no matter what. We are fortified that the proceedings of parliament shall not be impeached or questioned in any court or place out of parliament. Any interference with the business of parliament is unlawful, unacceptable, and shall be resisted. It is indeed true that we will use our new majority numbers to benefit Ghanaians by introducing private members' bill to remove the e-levy and to reduce the suffering of the people of Ghana. It is also true that we'll use our new majority to remove the betting tax and other nuisance tax. And Adruji, the question then is, why this posture? Okay, so it's important that uh, matters are put in proper perspective. You see, the 1992 constitution mirrors our history how checkered our history has been. So if you recall, in 1979, Kwekuba got elected as a member of parliament on the ticket of a political party. He comes to parliament and within some whatever says he's no longer a member of that political party. But he still wants to remain as an MP. And in fact, remain as an MP until the 1981 coup d'etat. Now, with this background and the fact that a major political party, possibly with the benefit of money or anything, can induce somebody to quickly cross carpet to another end or even leave his own political party. So when the 1992 constitution was being put together, mindful of this history, we inserted Article 97G. And the whole essence of that constitutional provision is to say, that if you are elected on the ticket of one party and you come to parliament, for whatever reason, you must remain there. If you decide voluntarily that you want to leave that party to a different political grouping or party, you should forfeit that seat by way of vacancy declaration. Now, you note that, for instance, Professor Wayoseni came to parliament on the ticket of the NDC, even though he used to be an MPP member. Then in 2006, for whatever reason said, he's no longer an NDC MP, and that he had cross carpeted to the other. Then we said, no, 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 the constitution doesn't. That by-election brought lawyer Inu Safusedi. All these things mirrors a particular history. Then came 2000, 2020, where in this case, an NPP MP, in the person of Andrew Esiama, a lawyer, took the initiative to contest the 2020 election as an independent candidate. Now, when he took that decision, his party cited the party's own constitution to say, a member who takes such an enterprise forfeits his membership. 
And since he's no longer a member of the MPP, he cannot continue. What is required in those circumstances is the declaration of intent. That declaration of intent of formally filing. And in this particular case, the, the, all the affected individual, uh, Honorable Kwachiaka, had actually filed his nomination with the Electoral Commission as an independent. Honorable Andrew Esiama had filed his nomination with the Electoral Commission as now MPP candidate. Morrison, uh, uh, what's the name, uh, Cynthia Morrison, had also filed his nomination. So the issue of their filing their nomination is a matter of fact. No dispute whatsoever. So when the minority leader then, now majority leader case, Lato Forsen, raised the issue, the speaker considered it worthy to give a ruling. But you see, like I always say, when this matter came to the speaker, he exercised a lot of sobriety, a lot of patience, and said, look, give me two days to consult broadly and deliver a ruling on it. And therefore, he delivered his ruling. Now, guess what? What was the ruling of the speaker? The ruling said, look, I am aware of a precedent set by my predecessor, Professor Michael Quay. However, I am not bound by that precedent. But looking at these facts, I am minded to do what the Constitution says should be done. What is the issue? Now, prior to that, Alex Afenio Markin had gone to the court now listen carefully, to even stop the speaker from going ahead with the declaration by way of an injunction. The speaker gave an indication that he has not been served with those processes and proceeded to deliver his ruling. Guess what? What Afenio Markin was seeking was an injunction to restrain the speaker from making the declaration. Mm. The speaker had declared those seats vacant and they stand vacant. How do you reverse that process? Because as at Friday, when Afenio Markin went to court, he had not amended the original action. It is the original writ that invoked the jurisdiction of the Supreme Court. Now, you cannot put an application on nothing. An application should be mounted on an existing action. So the originating motion is not the application. It is the rates. That is what invokes the original jurisdiction of the Supreme Court. Now, Afenio was seeking to stop that thing from happening. As at the time he went to court on Friday, that thing had happened. Like we always say, you don't grant an injunction where the horses are bolted already. The injunction is to stop the horses from moving. Now the horses have moved. So what would be the basis of granting an injunction? So you see, the court then cleverly said, then they are staying the execution. The fundamental question every lawyer will ask, the decision by the speaker, the ruling by the speaker, is it an executable order? If it is not an executable order, what would be the basis to say? Two, I have gone through the law report. And I've been trying to look for a precedent where the Supreme Court of Ghana from 1992, per an ex party application, stayed the execution of an order. There is none. Are there anybody to do that? In fact, if you recall, Tenadi, even that one, the Supreme Court had to do an extraordinary step of restraining the Electoral Commission. It was on notice. A major matter of this nature, to grant an ex party application makes it extremely strange and bizarre. But you see, I have looked at the reasoning behind the Supreme Court's decision to stay the execution of the other one. The Supreme Court says there are special circumstances. What is special about it? Did the speaker stop? now minority from conducting the business of government in the house. They voluntarily walked out. Now, where a person has a right to conduct government business, and that person voluntarily walks out of parliament, how can that same person now complain that it will affect government business? In any case, 
workouts are legitimate exercise of parliamentary work. And that is why all over the period from 1992 to date, even when they have been worked out, business of government had always run. So it was so strange that the Supreme Court now relies on a purported whatever frustration of government business. At that point, the Supreme Court had now moved into the realms of politics. It is no longer law, but it's doing politics. How can you accuse the Supreme Court of meddling no, no, no. in you the see, daily affairs of the politics of the country? Educate. Because, you see, the running of government, the governance, is an executive action. So when, for instance, the executive brings a bill to parliament, and you are saying that by reason of the ruling by speaker, that bill cannot be taken, that is a different matter. In this case, Apenio Makin instructed the, his group to walk out. He was not denied the opportunity to transact government business. When he voluntarily decided to walk out, it lies foul in his mouth to now complain that government business will be affected. So the very moment the Supreme Court cite this instance as one of the grounds to stay the execution, they are now doing politics and not law or policy formulation. And you see, there's always a danger with the court, activism. Look, I'll tell you this. Jackie Kwesin, who injuncted Jackie Kwesin from performing his duties as a member of parliament? How do you mean? Who injuncted him? Was it not the Supreme Court? The court, yes. From 1992, do you know any MP that has been injuncted before? Do you know? The panel that injuncted Jackie Kwesin included a CJ. The current CJ? Yes. At the time when they injuncted Jachi Kwesi, the people of Asinop were not denied representation until the by-election. Why is this important? Because the court now says that these persons whose seats have been declared vacant will be denied representation. Is that a double speak? When the court injuncted the Honorable Jachi Kwesi from performing his duties pending the determination of the, uh, 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 the action by the uh, Michael something something. The court was not mindful that the people in Asinov will be denied representation. Now you see, the curious thing about all of this is that the Supreme Court says these people will be denied representation. Curious. We have been in this country hmm? when one morning the Electoral Commission on the 6th of December by a stroke of pen, deny the people of uh, 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 Santro Kofi, Akwafu, Likpe, Lolobi, representation in parliament. Are you accusing the Supreme Court of double standards? I am saying that we were in this country when the people of Santro Kofi, the people of Akwafu, Likpe, Lolobi, were denied representation for four years. At the time where matters were in our courts. In fact, when a court took the extraordinary step of injuncting uh, 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 Amewu, yeah. the Supreme Court intervened by way of its supervisory jurisdiction to quash that. Look, I have always maintained that we are building a constitutional democracy. This constitutional democracy that we are building, we need to carry our people along. Where the impression is being created that when the action borders on Kwejo, the speed, the alacrity with which it is dealt with, but when it has to do with AMA, largely, it creates a certain impression. And I say this, I represented the NDC, yes, September last year. We issued a writ because the EC had, you know, planned conducting the limited exercise in their district offices. When we went to the court, guess what happened? When we went to the court, it was the vacation. When we, uh, we, we went in, guess what? The registry of the court gave us October, by which time the EC would have been done with the exercise. October. Meanwhile, in 2012, when Afarijan decided to create the additional 45 new constituencies, 
Ransford, France went to court, led by my then company law lecturer, Joe Gatti, to stop the process. It was during the legal vacation. The then Chief Justice, George Nawood, put up a sole panel. Justice Julius Ansar, may he so rest in peace. He presided over the matter during the vacation and gave a ruling. For me, my point is that the application of these rules must appear even. Look, justice delivery is founded on public confidence. Public confidence in the sense that when Eduji and Roland have a problem, we should have the confidence that when we go to court, the outcome, whatever it is, we will take it. But where we have any doubt that we'll go and this and that is what will happen. Eduji, wrap up. Eventually what you have is what we call self-help. Because then when you have the problem, you don't want to go to the court. What you want to do is to take the law into your own hands. And that is why I find this ruling by the APS court extremely concerning. It doesn't send the right signal to our people. What sort of signal does it send, Eduji? It sends you are an officer of the court. Yes, and that is why I'm even more concerned. <laughs> That is why I am even more concerned. Because listen to me, as director legal of the NDC, I have an important role to advise the party on key legal issues. With the things happening, what will be the base on which I will look my party in the face and say, take this A, B, C, D steps? Because my own people will tell me that, ah, Eduji, you say we should go where? We should go to court. And so I am saying that we have gotten to the point where the, 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 the rulings coming from, particularly the APS court, relative to matters with political undertone, do not send the right signal. Kwesi right. Kwatin, what do you make of all this? Because the commentary has been ongoing since the APEX court or the Supreme Court came out with this ruling. And subsequently, we've now seen the position taken by the NDC side of the House. That could mean, or even foretell, that we could have a constitutional crisis tomorrow in the Chamber of Parliament. Chrissy Kwating, new limited lawyer. Uh, Roland, thank you very much. But before I even proceed with my submission, uh, it is important to remind my senior that he started speaking at 7.30 and finished at 7.46. That's how many minutes? 16 minutes. OK, I'll give you 16 minutes. Go <laughs> ahead. And I, I never, the bell is on. I never interrupted him. So respectfully, I... I, I but you don't interrupt. Yes. I think there is one very important or significant point that we are all missing. And I will, first of all, avoid the temptation of even being swayed into the substantive matter. First of all, it is important to state that the substantive matter had not even been uh, determined in the first place. And stay of execution does not necessarily mean that the court has ruled in favor of uh, party A or party B. What the court is essentially saying is that it, is, it will be unfair for constituents not to be represented. I'm, I'm sure if you recall, during the 2012 uh, election petition, Mr. Chikata made similar arguments in court when he said that 2013 election, yes, 2013, petition. 2013 election petition when mr chikata advanced an argument that it will be improper and unfair for the court to visit the sense of the presiding uh, members or the i think they were the, sorry the returning officers on the ordinary voters whose no fault of this the returning officers did not sign their part on the pink sheet i mean similar argument is being raised here granted without even admitting him that indeed these four members of parliament are to be held liable for, I mean, whatever declaration that the speaker made. I don't think it will be fair for their constituents to be punished in such a manner, particularly when their constituents never participated in their decision, whether it was an intention to contest or cross carpeting in the first place. I'm not sure. I don't understand. You mean you agree with the courts? No, I am saying... Where there are instances where some key people who won seats as members of parliament are in the house uh, but we have orders of the court that bans them from representing their constituents 
Roland. I At the same time, it means that their rights have been infringed as consequence. Is that not the Ro same Roland, position I'm, I'm not, we all should Roland, hold? Roland, I'm not sure you heard me. The point I'm trying to make, at least for emphasis sake, is that granted without even admitting it, that the said MPs indeed have cross carpeted. I am saying that if you look at the determination or the ruling of the Supreme Court, the Supreme Court is essentially saying that we are unable to visit their sins, granted without even admitting that such things exist, which of course I am going to make a submission to say that such things don't even exist in the first place. It would be so unfair to visit such a sense on their representatives because, I mean, at the end of the day, their constituents did not do anything. That's why I drew the analogy of what Mr. Chikata, I mean, the submission he made on, on the floor of the Supreme Court during the 2013 electoral petition, when he made a very strong defense that you cannot visit the sense of the presiding officers on the ordinary voters just because they did not sign. I mean, we have a similar uh, situation here. But you see, before I even go into that, what is most important is that we are all missing a very particular important point, and that is the, the breach of natural justice. You see, even if you look at the whole principle surrounding creation, God even gave opportunity to Mr. Adam and Eve when he entered the Garden of Eden, I mean, of course, according to the Christian biblical story, and asked them that, where are you and what have you done? And appear, and he gave them opportunity to be heard. Are you talking about morality and law? No, not that. I'm going to, because at the end of the day, there is a correlation between morality and law. But I'm, I'm coming into the law. I'm just giving you even the whole point about creation, how the whole doctrine of natural justice started. It is an established principle, and it is tried law, that any person accused of anything, whether it's true or not, have to be given the opportunity to be heard. It is an established principle, so that as soon as the principle of natural justice is breached, it, it, it renders any decision, any order that has been made uh, henceforth void ab initio. So, Roland, you accuse Kwesi Kwarteng of having stolen your goat. Then you go in, make a determination that Kwesi Kwarteng should, should, should be in prison without giving opportunity for Kwesi Kwarteng to be heard. It's void ab initio in the first place. And that's what we witness and in, 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 in the floor of the, on the floor of the parliament. Where a motion is tabled on the floor of parliament, at no point did any of these members of parliament, the four members of parliament involved, were they given the opportunity to be heard. In that case, in that particular instance, it is an established principle in law. And it's actually the supreme principle in law that as soon as the principle of natural justice is breached, then it's void ab initio. And the principle of natural justice, they have always been in two phases. The Audi Autem Patem rule and the Nemo Judas in Corsa Sua. When we talk about Audi Autem Patem rule, we are talking about fair hearing. Fair hearing. As soon as you accuse a person of having done anything wrong, it is only fair that you give the person opportunity to be heard. Mr. Kwesi Kwarteng, as you're going you continue with that, we know that the Speaker of Parliament, during that ruling, said it explicitly yeah. that there was Speaker Mike Okwe who made a ruling. And subsequently, even though that's a precedent, his own actions and pronouncement on that day were not in recourse to what had happened earlier, and that he was given his own explanations or interpretations and his understanding of what he thought the standing orders of the House and the Constitution would be based for which the ruling was made. I think do they, you think, do you think, mm -hmm. do you think, on the same principles and... Of natural justice. Or that you're ongoing, that everybody would need to be given a fair hearing. Is Do you think, in that instance, where Michael Quinn made those pronouncements, your own member of parliament, who subsequently went independent, was also given fair hearing, and so in this very instance, the two are coterminous? Yeah, but you see, if you had allowed me to learn, I'm sure this question would have even come in the first place. Because in the case of the Siama, he was actually copied with a motion to the speaker to make a determination. It's not even actually a declaration, to inform the parliament about the vacation of his seat. With this four... Uh, MPs involved, at no point were they copied in the motion that came from the minority. So they are not the same. In the case of Esiama, Esiama, the motion to the speaker on vacation of his seat or on the fact that, I mean, he's left or he's cross carpeted, he was copied in that, in that uh, I mean, particular motion or that letter. In their instance, Are you saying that being copied and then also being given an opportunity for fair hearing are the same? No. Are they coterminous? No. If, if you see, when you talk about the principle of fair hearing, we are essentially giving you an opportunity to be heard. Roland, if I write a letter to your general manager and then copy you, what essentially does it mean? Am I not giving you an invitation or invitation to act on the same letter? How same or how similar is this instance? 
where emotion is stable. Of course, even I, 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 I want to finish my submission on the natural justice before I even move into the, whether or not the speaker even had the powers to make that determination in the first place. The, but the principle that I'm saying is that if you read the case of, um, of course, the court decision in the Republic versus High Court, uh, uh, Accra ex party, uh, lie immensa. The court was very clear, and the Supreme Court said that failure to grant a party an opportunity to be heard is a breach of natural justice, rendering the decision void. So even we go in, before we go into whether or not the Supreme Court had, whether or not it was an executable instrument, whether or not a mistake of execution will, will stand, the first principle is we have to ask ourselves a very fundamental question. Were those four MPs heard? If they were not heard, the decision, the declaration, the order made by the, the, the Speaker of Parliament is void of an issue. Why were you expecting them to be heard? Uh, being heard essentially will mean that you give them a reasonable time. I'm saying where? On no, it doesn't matter where. Most important thing is that you give them the right opportunity to be heard. It could be on the floor Tibet. of parliament. It, it doesn't matter. It could be, of course, parliament has their own procedure. Was a Siama giving the same opportunity? In the, that's what I'm saying. That in the case of a Siama, the motion announcing his vacation, or the motion to the speaker of parliament to announce his vacation of of or the cross, I mean, the alleged cross capacity, he was informed. In that case, there was an opportunity or an extension of invitation to him to be heard. This never happened, particularly when you want to compare the two, two instances. Of course, of course, even granted without I've been admitting him that a CMA was not heard, you cannot necessarily say that because a CMA was not heard, the principle of natural justice should this in, in this particular context also not be not be adhered to. I'm not sure that's the logic that we are advancing in, in the end. Again, when you talk about I mean duty of interpretation, I think that must be distinguished from the speaker's rule. We must state that simplicity because if you look at the speaker's rule, I am not a member of parliament, but if you look at our constitutional provision, particularly, if, and if you allow me to read uh, Article 93 of the Constitution of Ghana, I don't I think you have a constitution. So, we, Article 93, uh, 93 uh, 1, if you look at the subsection 2, it talks about subject to the provisions of this constitution, the legislative power of Ghana shall be vested in parliament and shall be exercised in accordance with this constitution. Essentially saying that even if you look at the legislative power upon which the speaker of parliament stood on to make that declaration or that determination, it is subject to the constitution of Ghana. I don't understand. Are essentially you saying, saying that, being in essentially this pronouncement saying that, essentially saying that, I'm, I'm that we're unconstitutional? No, I'm, I'm essentially saying is that all parliamentary powers takes its records or its root from the constitution. And in the case of Ghana, unlike, for instance, what we have in the United Kingdom, in the case of Ghana, we are using constitutional supremacy, not parliamentary supremacy. So at every point, particularly when there is ambiguity when it regards to any, I mean, constitutional provision, records must be made to the constitution and not parliament. And of course, what is the position of the constitution when it comes to interpretation? You read Article 2, read Article 132 of the constitution, it's very explicit and clear. Well, that as soon as there is any ambiguity with regards to any provision of the constitution, that alone is the reserve of the Supreme Court of Ghana. And it has, has nothing to do with, you know, 16 minutes, we can do the calculation. <laughs> And it has nothing to do, it has nothing to do with, I mean, the Speaker of Parliament making such a determination. So the, 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 the emphasis is that the Speaker in the first place, eh, because if you look at the role of the Speaker, the role of the Speaker is administrative and procedural and not interpretative. What actions did he undertake in that ruling on that day that made it interpretative? Let me, let me look, let me give you, uh, uh, let, let's refer to Article 97. If you look, look at Article 97, a member of parliament shall vacate his seat in parliament. Of course, I move straight to, I mean, the, the G, which has raised, I mean, much I mean, contention. If he leaves the party of which he was a member at, at the time of his election to parliament to join another party or seeks to remain in parliament as an independent member. Of course, even if we want to look at the holistic reading of the whole Article 97, at no point did Article 97 give any declarative powers to the Speaker of Parliament. Of course, I know they will make reference to their standing orders. But even if you look at their standing orders, their standing orders actually gives power to the speaker to inform parliament on the vacation of seat, not to make a declaration. In this case, what the speaker did was a declaration. And How he, did he do that? Oh, you go and sit in parliament and make a ruling that based on a motion that has been tabled before me, I declare that person A, person B, person, v, uh, person C 
should vacate his seat. That, that was a declaration. And I'm saying that if we look at the whole provision of Article 97, it does not give any powers to Parliament or the Speaker whatsoever to make a declaration when it comes to the interpretation but the question, of this. What you're saying as a lawyer, is it your personal opinion or it's the party's think, opinion? No, I think I made a reference to the Constitution. If I, if you, you So it's your me. personal opinion? No, in, reference, that, in reference no, to I'm, the Constitution? I'm saying that I made a, I made a reference so to the So let me ask you this. But, because but, you, have, you have your own colleague okay. who is a member of your party. Mm -hmm. He's a leading member of, of your party as well. He's a legal practitioner. Okay. And... And the appear could be he's a regular on our show. He says, yeah, I my, that's my MP. He's your your he's even your constituency MP. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so, so listen to this. Him, you even contested him. He's now my listen MP. To that's this. the most important thing. L listen to this. <laughs> he said, and he's an experienced legal practitioner. Yes. Lawyer Apia Kubi. Andy Apia Kubi says, I expected the speaker to do what he did. And so I have no qualms with it. He just followed precedence. Who are you to say this is an alternative? I'm, I'm not sure we are practicing individual supremacy. And of course, I, I know, I mean, the title that you've put me. What I know is that we are practicing constitutional supremacy. And the constitutional supremacy, the constitution actually becomes superior to any other opinion that is being professed. At the end of the day, what is the pro position of the constitution? The position of the constitution that particularly when it comes to matters of ambiguity, particularly when it comes to matters where there is no clear understanding, when there is no clear cut as what the constitution really means, it is left for the Supreme Court to make a declaration. And you see, of course, I have heard other legal arguments that indeed the Supreme Court even gave war what the, 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 the applicants asked. If you read the Rosemary Kwando case, the, Supreme, the court emphasized that in, when you make an application to see for a relief, in fact, the court can even go beyond what you sought for and actually even give what you did not necessarily seek for. They can go beyond that. So when you, when you listen to, of course, I mean, a lot of other legal submissions where they make it look like the court had, I don't really get it. At the end of the day, at the end of the day, one, it was not your duty to make, uh, well, you can proceed. Or oh, am I done? No, you have a minute. Please. Oh, very well. Mm. I am saying that, I am saying that, uh, first of all, the Supreme Court, in fact, can even grant, I mean, that, that was my final point, the Supreme Court can even grant more than what the plaintiff asked for. And if left to me alone, I feel that the Supreme Court was even magnanimous with, with the decision. Magnanimous? Yes. Because if you read the Rosemary Kwando case, the Supreme Court could, in fact, in law, even give in more than what the plaintiff asked for. Particularly if you look at how these are who are representative, their representation and their consciences are going to be disenfranchised. I feel that the Supreme Court should have even proceeded and take a very bold decision and vacated the entire ruling or the entire declaration, which was erroneous by even the speaker in the first place. But of course, it is also important to add mm. that it's just a state of execution and the substantive matter should, uh, is going to be heard. So I don't even really get the drama coming from the NDC. Because at the end of the day, a state of execution is not a determination of the substantive matter. You have an opportunity to file your defense and all your submissions for the court to make a determination on. So to, to play to the public gallery and make it look like you, you've lost a case and for that matter you are not going to respect the jurisdiction and the authority of the Supreme Court, I don't get where that is coming from. Well, we'll be joined by Dr. Jonathan Asantiotri, political analyst, lecturer with the UCC. Good morning to you. Have you joined us? All right. But... What, what, what's all this? Uh, do we have a constitutional crisis on our hands? Tomorrow, what do you think we should be expecting based on the strong positions that have been taken by the side? Because the speaker, if you make reference to Marion Johnson, especially in that ruling, where we know that the organs of government need to be given their due in terms of the whole concept of the separation of powers. And then also you, you make reference to what the role of the speaker should be as uh, the head of the legislature, etc. Um, somebody will argue that what's happening? <clears throat> yeah, clearly, you don't need any Solomon to come and tell you that we are, we are in the middle of a very dire constitutional crisis. I don't think you need any, 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 any Solomon to come, to, uh, to come and tell you that. And I, I, I don't think in trying to analyze this issue, this issue you, you would even need to go and quote to Madri Emerson because uh, our system itself is replete with a lot of authorities on uh, governing these issues. As I can, on top of my head, uh, quote uh, to four and attorney general. I think we also need to understand, and I think my learned friend here rightly said, that in a system, it is the constitution that is supreme. It is the constitution that is supreme. We, every, every, every practice what is a constitutional 
de democracy. And the very essence of a constitutional democracy is to limit the powers of government uh, to safeguard our, our, our rights, our, our right to life, to our, our, our liberties, our right to pursue our own happiness. Having said that, it is also important to, uh, to understand that it's not just the powers of the, of the executive that are limited, neither nor the powers of the uh, of parliament. That the powers of the court itself is always is, is also limited, because the very essence of a constitutional democracy is to try as much as possible to limit uh, arbitrariness. You, 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 you understand, and that's why everything you do must be within the confines of the law. Uh, what has transpired over the past few days is because of the so many, in my in my view, acts of arbitrariness that uh, has happened uh, concerning, in my view, how the how the Supreme Court itself has 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 acted. Why are a lot of so many lawyers up in arms against the against the Supreme Court? Because I think it, it, it ought to 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 make clear that when it comes to issues pertaining to Stay of execution, mm. and the law is very clear on that. In fact, I've, I, 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 I don't recall having seen any circumstances under which the courts can grant or can stay execution by way of an ex parte application. But they have the inherent right. Well, I, I beg you, you, uh, you oh, when you're speaking, you, 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 you gave no, they have it. No, because you, you gave you know you gave your own. I don't like. I don't do this. Mr. Kwasi, you gave your principle. You 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 principle. I think you postulated that you didn't want any interjection. So let's go by let's go by our own conceptualized rules. Yeah, and it's clear the courts the courts do not have the inherent right to act outside of outside the confines of the law. And that's why they are, they are, we have rules of court. Yeah, 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 yeah. The, the, the powers of the Supreme Court is clear. The Constitution itself give the Supreme Court its jurisdiction. Yeah, 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 yeah. You get a, a, a picture. That's why when it comes to, let's say, injunction, instances where the Supreme Court allows injunctions by way of expertise, is limited to just what, 10 days. Yeah. Ten days. Yeah, am I, am I No, in fact, are... if you want the process. Yeah, no, no, please. No, but the case no. of Rosemary Kwan. Oh, that's supposed oh, that. And we know that twenty-five. Please, please, you please, are, please, you please, are, please, 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 please. You are losing control. Please, 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 please. Uh, you are losing control. You are losing control. Also, I think this confusion is is also born out of the fact that when it comes to issues pertaining to how Article ninety-seven of our Constitution is to be applied, we don't have a laid-down procedure process. But even there, we need to understand that the constitution granted parliament the power to make rules to govern their own processes. And per those rules, Article 18, it's, uh, uh, Section 18 of, this, of, of those rules, it's clear that the speaker has the power to declare the word there is declare. A, a declaration. The word there hasn't. So, if I, let me read for the avoidance of doubt. Uh, let me, let me, oh, I can't find so this. So, we'll react after he's done. Okay. So, I can, so, you can check. Or, uh, or the 18 of the of the of the of the uh, what's called standing orders mm. of parliament on my on my on my behalf but the word there is is declare but most importantly the question that we all need to to uh, to, uh, to ask ourselves is under what circumstances can parliament or will parliament be allowed to interfere with or can the court be allowed to interfere with how parliament does its work i think so, uh, to find attorney general was pretty clear there mm. that the courts generally are bad from interfering with the work of parliament. However, if parliament and how it, it discharges with its duty goes outside the confines of its jurisdiction, flouts the constitution, then the court will have power because I'm saying, and, and, I, and rightly my brother has said, that we are practicing what is a constitutional supremacy as against a parliamentary supremacy. So that where parliament goes outside of its scope, then the, then, 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 then the Supreme Court will have the power to, uh, to, uh, to interfere. So, in my view, yes, if I'm, 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 I'm supposing that, that, that the action brought by the majority, ma, a majority leader was to seek an interpretation of Article 97. Yeah, you understand? But another issue then comes up because, you see, after the Speaker ordered for the vacation of the four MPs. Because we all need to, to uh, after the four MPs. It's not the case that the, the, the jurisdictional issues there 
would be governed by Article 99. Because you read Article 99 of the Constitution, and and, and yeah, you say the High Court shall have the shall have ju jurisdiction to hear and determine any question whether a person has been validly elected as a member of Parliament or the seat of a member has become vacant. Yeah, 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 son. So, is it, it, the Supreme Court that has the jurisdiction to hear this matter? We're not sure that is violated. If you do this again, I will scream on you. I please, don't do this. Please, let's, let's, I let's disagreed have... vehemently no, it's okay, it's okay. everything you said. Go if you do this again, I'll scream on you. I, I don't please do this. Please. 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 Like I said, it's a debate, so... Yeah, no, but, but, but you see, yeah, I, come should, here, I, don't, I don't agree with what people say, but I keep quiet. Yes, I don't sir, like it when people interfere when I'm... Calm down. Because what it was, you see, it's, it's a deliberate ploy, I'm, I'm thinking, from them people, to, to, uh, to, uh, to undermine your train of thought. I, I, don't, I don't do that. I think it's very disrespectful. And, 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 and I must say it. Yeah. Yeah, 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 son. So, there, 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 there are a number of issues that borders on the system of governance we took. And, and clearly also borders on the purpose of that system of governance. Mm. Well, you see, we say, and when we went to law school, it was one fundamental principle they taught us, that justice must not only be done. It must manifestly be seen to be done. So, and, and now, that, uh, that means, what that means is that <clears throat> if my brother Edwiji brings an action to the court mm. and you apply speed X, mm -hmm. then when I bring my action to court, you must... And, and everything, also you must apply speed X. Now, how can you justify a reason that says that you, some people will be left without representation? When we have a situation in Ghana, a situation which all of us should be ashamed of. Which is? The South issue. That for a whole four years, some of our compatriots are without representation. You, 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 you understand? So... Listen, we are faced, we are bedeviled with a needless constitutional crisis. You think it's needless? Very, 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 Could very, have been avoided. Very, very needless. Especially when and Andy, my big brother Andy, also my mate in law school, we were, we were called in the same year. And, and the Apia Kubi? Yeah, he's, he, he, he was my mate at, the, at, at law school. school. We were called the same year. Now, where Andy made reference to precedence, because also you need to understand that the, the, the legal tradition we are under is also one which is premised on the principle of precedence. Yeah, yeah, you understand? It may not be written, but it's something that certainly has to be considered when you are making decisions. Yeah, you understand? So you have, you have a situation where we do not have a clear laid down procedure for how, where issues of Article 97 happens, how it should be handled. I'm, 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 I'm coming. How, but however, we have a matter of precedence. Okay. In my view, mm. In my view, mm -hmm. I think this mat the, the matter was pretty simple, mm -hmm. as in straight, mm -hmm. st st straightforward. You think it was a straightforward matter? straightforward matter. matter. Yeah, 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 you understand? Be that as, as me, questions have arisen. Okay. Now, I think that if we had applied, been consistent with basic principles of law, like I'm talking about one, the state of ex ex execution, mm -hmm. you understand? Does the Supreme Court have the power to stay execution of an action by parliament. You know, it's a question that needs... That's the crux of the uh, matter. Does the Supreme Court have the power to stay an order, an order legally made? Because the question is, did the Speaker have the power to make those orders? That's the first issue. Did the Speaker have the powers to make those orders? And the orders that he made were the constitutional. As in, in terms of... And when, when you are talking about the constitutional, you have to look at just both the procedure and the substance. The procedure is, did he flout orders 18? Because we should understand that, 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 that the power of parliament to make their own standing orders also flows from the constitution. The constitution gave parliament the power to make their own standing orders. Okay. Two, then when it comes to the substance of it, did what the speaker do, did, he, did, did it amount to an interpretation of the constitution? So that's your position. Yeah, did what the, but, but no, there's questions that. What do you think? Did, did you th did you think that he interpreted the constitution, or he was just uh, doing his normal work uh, as a speaker, uh, 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 as enjoined uh, uh, by? I hope, uh, you are, I hope uh, you're using the same kind. Uh, yes. I hope you're using the same kind. I think Listen, I, I didn't speak more than eight minutes. Edward, you spoke for sixty minutes. No, you, you oh, spoke for sixty no, minutes. People are marking. People are sending me yes, messages. Please. I didn't speak my, for sixty my minutes. 
my 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 director I, is timing feel... 60 minutes 60 no, minutes you have 60 no, minutes no, your, your director is not the only timekeeper i don't i don't please. i don't feel so please tell your other timekeepers no. that specifically we are also managing the time here 60 I'm, minutes I'm no, no 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 you are being treated fairly no it's, and it's, you are the lawyer i'm not even the lawyer so please i have the right to call the assembly when we start in my view you see i mean you've interjected more than you see in my view in my view in my view no this is article article 97 it become trade it no, no it's not it's not it's not two against one we are talking to the to the issues but i agree with you you understand i, I, I think article 97 is pretty clear okay. you understand however like the issues are what i'm thinking i've laid out all right does the does the supreme court have the power to stay execution of a declaration by the speaker those are the issues. Parliament. I think All those right. are the issues. All right. And we must be dealt Eduji, critically. Otherwise, I, I, I'll ask you this. Let, let's put the standing order 18 on, on the screen. Uh, uh, yes, and, 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 and Doc is on the line. Uh, Doc, good morning. Do, Dr. Jonathan Santiotri. Good morning, uh, Roland. Okay. I know I give, I give a, a lot of time to my lawyers, but um, they are the lawyers and their discussions as well. But on the side of you, the political analysts, and let's say, looking at it from the view of political science um, and then also the architecture of the state, so to speak, just what do you think this creates within the space of creating the, not, the cohesion that we need, making sure that we respect the various organs of mm. government or the state and its effects on posterity? Well, interesting. Um, I think that, let me say good morning once again. Uh, earlier on, I said good morning, but not doing, I was not the one to talk or to speak. Um, what has really happened is quite interesting, and uh, probably we may be expecting something unusual to happen in Parliament come tomorrow. Now, looking at the architecture of the principle of separation of powers, uh, to say that the legislature makes laws. Uh, these laws are interpreted by the judiciary. And then when the interpretation is done, the execution is by the executive arm of government, uh, if so, so, so to speak. So if you, you have to be incarcerated, it will take some kind of process of judiciary and then you end up with the executioners. And that happens to be the police and other coercive force of the state. So I may not want to go into the legality as you rightly pointed out, but I think that the lawyers know very well that sometimes taking one article in isolation will not create a full meaning or a full sense. There is no other interpretation of what cross carpeted simply means. Changing nomenclature is simply you've cross carpet. But if you look at this article 97, and you look at the two, the two, not the 91 and all the subsections, the two. The two says that notwithstanding paragraph G of clause one. So we know paragraph G of clause one says that if he leaves the party of which he was a member at the time of his election to parliament to join another party, or seeks to remain in parliament as an independent member. So whichever way you look at it, if at the time of your election, you are elected to be a member of a particular party, once you change your nomenclature, you have crossed carpet. Mm. And you see, it is for a good reason that the two is there. Notwithstanding paragraph G of cross one of this article, a merger of parties at the national level sanctioned by the party's constitutions, or that is the party's constitution, that the mother party, mm. or membership of a coalition government of which his original party forms part shall not affect the status of a member of parliament. So you see, when a CMO said, for example, that he was going to caucus with the MPP party for them to become the majority party, that could not be interpreted as someone crossing carpet. Because the nomenclature as an independent candidate is still there. Now, let me ask a few questions about this state of execution and its, and its nitty gritties. Mm. Now, when you say that Parliament, of course, I, I foresee that what the Supreme Court has done 
amount to some kind of interference. And that, if you look at it on a regular basis, that will have meant an absurdity in the workings of parliament. Mm. Let's just say that every time the parliament says something, they approve of a loan, and somebody says that, well, I'm going to seek interpretation with this loan. And then they will say that, oh, this particular loan is unlawful. And then when the bill, so you will see that we will be going into what? Some kind of uh, chaos. And that is not something that we need to invite. And that's the more reason why in the wisdom of the craft of the constitution, there is the need for that separation of powers. Because there's to some extent where you can come in. But if it becomes a regularity, as some of us are seeing in the workings of the current Sup Supreme Court, I think they leave much to be desired. And they've been very inconsistent in some sections, very consistent in others. Mm. That is where the worry is. Mm. Now, stay of execution, Roland. If you say stay of execution, and these people are allowed by the Speaker to stay in Parliament, mm -hmm. only for you to tell us that what the Speaker has done is lawful. Now, what constitutional effect or negativity would the nation have suffered with these people remaining in Parliament at the time? And what remedial measures are we going to get from the Supreme Court with respect to these people staying in Parliament before the closure or the end of the, of the eighth Parliament? If it happens that you've stayed execution and you say, well, they should stay in your final judgment, that is fine. But if it happens that you've asked them to stay only for you to look into the law and realize that what the speaker did was lawful, what remedial measures will we get from that as a nation? Okay. And in terms of constitutional implementation. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Now... If let's put that order 18, the standing order, and these are the new standing orders of parliament. I think we're still 18 the, in the last standing orders as well. It will be on your screen. And then I, I'll pose a question in relation to what Article 97 says and what the speaker did. That's the speaker himself, Backbane, undertook in terms of the ruling that he made. Because he says, vacancy order than resignation. And then makes reference to Article 97. It says, the Speaker shall inform the House of the occurrence of a vacancy of the seat of a member under Clause 1, 1B to E, G, and H of Article 97 of the Constitution. It has to be I instead. Now, Ed, you just oppose that. And let's say Speaker Bagman says, I did not undertake any interpretation. I was just doing my work as a Speaker of Parliament. What should be the posture reservedly? in anticipation tomorrow of the speaker, knowing that this is what the majority side from the MPP is saying, and the composed majority side of the NDC caucus per all the pronouncements they've been making in the public domain. You see, Just four minutes on this, please. Yes, yes. You see, Roland, you see, when you have two children, when you have two children, is it in timing? When it's time to tell you, you are, <laughs> When you have two children, the way you respond to their concerns give an indication whether as a parent you are really parenting well or not. The reason why I make this point is that the MPP currently have this feeling and they are emboldened to demonstrate a lot of impunity in this country because they believe also. that there are no consequences for their action. That is the current mindset of the MPP. You see, the only reason why we are here is that the MPP is running away from the precedent they set in the year 2020. That is the only reason why we are here. Mm. When Okwe gave that ruling against Isiama, listen carefully, it didn't bother them because at that time they had a lot of, you know, they had a comfortable majority. And so whether Isiama was available or not could not stop them from conducting business. But you see, any time you take an action that is short-sighted, mm. an action that is not informed by other implications, you get to this point. How was that short-sighted? Okwe's ruling was so short-sighted that he didn't also look at the reverse. A situation where you have only one majority and you are losing one, what will you do? You see, this morning, my friend here makes the point that, and, and you see, he states the law in S. Patilai and applies it wrongly. S. Patilai only deals with a situation where 
judicial processes or whatever that requires a hearing, you have not been heard. That is what Espartilai says. The fundamental question in applying Espartilai is to ask yourself, who is in court? Is any of the affected MPs in court? So at best, per your reasoning, Afenio Markin is at best a busybody. Is he one of the affected MPs? Has his seat been declared vacant? That requires him to go to court to allege a breach of natural justice. What law are we propounding? When you have not been affected directly by a decision, you go to court and say, I'm complaining about somebody else. What if he's going as a head of the majority caucus? Please, was a decision taken about the majority caucus? Individual seats have been declared vacant. The four MPs, none of them is in court. That's an afterthought. They have lost all defenses. So basically what they are doing now is to be running octopus all over the place trying to find a reason to hold on to. None of the affected MPs is in court. Yes, Speaker, what should it be his position tomorrow? I will deal with that. You see, I have always maintained, yes, the only reason why Russia or the United States of America has never attacked Russia, do you know why? Because there's something called mutually assured destruction. Listen carefully. Mutually assured destruction. The US of A knows that if they fire a missile into Russia today, Alaska is just a distance away. You see, when people decide to disrespect you in a co equal manner, what you do is to assert your authority. If you remember the famous US case, the still seizure case, Justice Frankfurter has something. He said the concept of separation of powers is to demonstrate separateness, separateness, but interdependence. Okay, okay. You need a situation where these co equal arms of government must respect each other. The manner in which the court intervenes, the speed with which the court intervenes, is becoming one too many. And I'm worried. Look at the manner in which Parliament passed a bill. And then somebody goes to court and says, we are injuncting the transmission of the bill so passed to the president for assent. And today the matter is in abeyance. When you do that, what you are doing is that you are using the constitution as it were to project a particular mischief. And that is extremely dangerous. I'll conclude. What on time this. Is that? Oh, no, let me just 30 seconds on this. Because it was you how see, many more minutes? If you, no, read, he's past two minutes. if you read Article 99, Article 99 says the High Court shall have jurisdiction to hear and determine any question whether, listen carefully, the seat of a member of parliament has become vacant. What the Supreme Court is a question whether the Speaker can declare those seats vacant or not. How is that a matter for the Supreme Court? What should be his posture tomorrow? I asked you that that's question. And that is what I said. Hmm? I said. I gave you the example of U.S. When people know that their actions have consequences on others, they will sit up. And so I strongly believe that the speaker is the head of a co-equal arm of government called the legislature. He must assert the dignity and authority of it's parliament continue. tomorrow. Now that could, see, that could lead to a constitutional yeah, crisis. First, first Four minutes all, for you. Yeah, first of all, it should not present it. Maybe look as though the NPP only went to court to file for an application for stay of execution. There is a substantive suit that is sitting, be, uh, I mean, in, at, the, at the Supreme Court. Very well. Yes, very and that's, well. that's public knowledge. Yes, and that substantive suit has to do with uh, whether or not the declaration made by the Speaker, he had the powers to do so. So there's an interpretative question. So Article 99 doesn't come here in the first place. As, let me land, let me land. No, you can, if, if I'm wrong, you can, let me land when I finish with my submission. That's Article 99 submission. doesn't come here. Don't, don't defer it to the, to the High Court because there is a question of interpretation here where the Supreme Court has to, say, has to make a declaration. Again, I think reference was made to the standing orders where you read it on television for everybody to see. It is instructive to know that even in the standing orders, at no point 
that the standing orders requires the speaker to make a declaration of 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 of, of seat. Read what the speaker said. No, no, no. You are Should I get up and go? What is yes. this? No, 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 no. Oh. No, but no, 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 no. Please let him have his. No, 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 no. Eduji, Eduji, Eduji. You correct? Eduji. No, no, I'm not lying. 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 Stop that. Stop that. Please. Stop that. Wait till I talk. When you are talking, Eduji, you think we are not misinforming people? Eduji, when you are quoting Article 99, please. When you are quoting Article 99, Mr. Applying it wrongly, you think we are not misinforming people? And order what did the speaker do? What? No, oh, Edouji. Edouji, play it. Play it. No, 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 please. Play it. Please, please. please. We'll play the video of the speaker. Please get a video of the speaker. Please please please. Video of the speaker. I, will, I will even move beyond that argument. No, that's ah, even, be, even. Move on. No, I'm Your saying, three I, minutes is a short. Please I, go I'm on. I'm saying that even if you read order, order 18 of the, of, of the standing orders of parliament, it requires the speaker to inform, not to make a declaration. If you look at what the, the speaker did, of course, he argues that he was applying the constitutional provision but you see at no point can you apply a constitutional provision without first of all placing a meaning onto it because you have to place a meaning and understand within a, a certain context or perspective before you'll be able to apply and that's a matter to interpretation at what point do you determine or how do you determine if speaker whether it's michael quay or the current speaker backbin made a declaration of informing parliament of a vacant seat or not or rather made an interpretation and so said the seat was vacant. I am saying that whichever way, it is not the decision of the speaker to make. It's the sole reserve of the Supreme Court. And that's why we filed I mean, a suit in court. So when you present it as though we're only in court for a certain state of execution, and that for in this case, Article 99 should be applicable so that the case probably will, the proper forum or the jurisdiction has to be in the High Court. It does not apply within this context. Again, you spoke about the standing orders. I, I get the, I mean, the attempt to make it look like the standing orders are a bit even supreme that the, the, the Supreme Court. Now, listen to... Nobody has said that here. Yes, because at the end of the day, the standing orders is even subsumed by the 1992 Constitution. I think we all know And that. look at this. We see, nobody has said I'm that here. Me. Well, I'm making a point, if I, if I had allowed me to learn. If you listen to uh, Justice Kolendi in the Justice of the Lion AG case and the Francis Osebo uh, in AG case, this is Justice Kolendi. Even though Parliament is a, mem is a master of its own procedure, it cannot be overemphasized over -emphasized that... All houses, rules, orders, procedures, and practices also have a master, which is the 1992 Constitution. So the speaker cannot hide under the umbrella that, well, I was applying the standing orders, and within the standing orders, I have the power to make a declaration, even though the standing orders even say you can inform, and then hide under the umbrella and do an interpretative work, whilst the main work of the speaker has to do with uh, procedural and administrative. Again, I mean, just I, I just want to quickly in, and then react to what my senior colleague said. I mean, he was more on the state of execution and made a submission that the Supreme Court, because there has not been precedent of state execution, they don't have the powers to do so. The Supreme Court actually has inherent power to grant any order. The uh, state of execution should be, should be construed as having the same effect as an injunction. And of course, in ex parte application, at every point when you grant an ex parte application, it may be granted, particularly due to the extreme situation or the extreme emergency that is attached to an ex parte application. I mean, reference is made to Order 25 of CI 47. Of course, I get a bit when he said that, oh, uh, in you, when, when in state of execution, you cannot grant more than 10 days. I think the reference is made to Order 25 of CI 47. Except to say that there is a case law in the Rosemary Quando case, the court held that in appropriate circumstances, a court of law can grant a relief not even sought for by a party. So yes, uh, 10 days based on the CI 47, but there's also a case law which says that the court can even go beyond that, and that is also within the remit of the law. Of course, as to whether the Supreme Court, I mean, had, well, okay, it's fair, let's him proceed. You have no, to play no. the video of the speaker. <laughs> please get the, uh, the speaker's video ready. It doesn't matter. It okay. It's not please, fair please, if you don't please. play it to him. Yeah. He didn't so, have the policy. Let, let, let me give you three minutes on this. Sorry, yeah, I, I just yeah, got... So, so, what should be the posture of the speaker tomorrow? Uh, so, so for, uh, Knowing that we have a crisis. Yeah, so, my brother simply wants to give the impression that the Supreme Court has unfettered powers. But that would be against the purpose for which we have this constitutional democracy. Their powers are also limited by, uh, by law and by procedure itself. So I think that will answer your, uh, your, uh, your, uh, your, uh, your response. I think tomorrow the, the, uh, the Speaker needs to assert his authority. I, 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 I don't understand. The Speaker needs to assert <coughs> his authority by insisting on the orders or the information, like my brother is saying. You are saying that the speaker should defy the Supreme Court. I'm, I'm, I'm not saying he should, he should defy. I'm saying that the speaker should insist on the position he's taking. You understand? When you, you see, when, when you read Article 97, very well, it says that a member of parliament shall vacate 
is he a member of parliament shall vacate his seat in parliament if he leaves the party he, 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 a member of parliament shall vacate shall vacate it so you see the speaker when he informed parliament did not interpret the law yes, he he simply followed what the law said now if they think that they have any issue concerning that concerning the uh, the, uh, the others the speaker has made like like we said here they should simply fall under article 99 go to the high court and go and seek an answer to any question that borders on those seats having become vacant so tomorrow i think it's actually the duty of the speaker to assert his the, the, the authority of parliament to save all of us from this clear abuse and disrespect of the powers that the constitution have granted each arm of government for the benefit of the purpose of this constitution itself which which is the people of this country you mean for tomorrow's sake for posterity yeah. all right we'll play the the the, the speaker soundbite but before then um dr asante Autry, to wrap up to wrap up just in three minutes what do you think should be the position of the speaker i mean you will not be speaking law of course but in the realm of um, political science uh, political commentary and then also for national cohesion respect for the organs of government well i wouldn't want to hazard a guess for now but uh, whatever be the case I, I believe you must you know abide by the law of the land that gives him that kind of power to do whatever he has done but just by the by you see i've asked myself what is the motivation behind the stay of the stay of execution by by the supreme court because i'm thinking that they are looking at the immediate effect of the order or the declaration of the speaker and what are they what is the immediate effect of course the in terms of the governance structure in parliament it will be affected the party in government will have minority and it has some kind of consequences but in as much as you want to cure this mischief you are you are virtually assisting the npp you see to be very unprincipled in the sense that if what they did in the past was based upon a certain principle and by law whatever is happening today should equally be from the same stance but we cannot be appropriating and reprobating the Supreme Court is creating a problem for itself. Because, Roland, I've sat down and asked myself, it appears there is a thin line between interpretation and enforcement. Because the law is already there. Parliament has its practice, its rules and regulations. This has been there in the books over the period. It has been implemented before. Now, another person comes and implements it, and you say he is interpreting it. What? So, so I'm tempted to think that is there really, or it is not, it isn't there a thin line, right, between interpretation and enforcement, or an order or a declaration and interpretation. When the Supreme Court interprets, what do they mean by that? Are they not asking us to enforce when they have interpreted? Should it lie down like that? When you interpret something, it means that the understanding comes out clearly, and that understanding is that which must be implemented. And so if this thing has been right, in our law books, so to speak, and someone is implementing it, how then do you interpret to mean that this time round is it, it is interpretation? Mm. So I think that per your question, the speaker will have to stand on his ground. If he believes, I, I, I believe he's very experienced, not to waste about that. In terms of law, I believe by now, they should be doing negotiations in the background so that they all save us, you know, of this democratic crisis that we are about to find ourselves in. Right. And so I think that if you look at the posturing of Mr. Afenio Markin, I've said on one of those uh, important media platforms that whatever he's done, what he did, amounts to this kind of what I call, uh, 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 what did I even call that? Uh, oh, I just... All right. Thank you very much. 
Okay, so so I have a couple of uh, comments here. Let me just um, just read, read 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 some of the comments, and then we'll play the video. Um, you will also find that we have a, a, a couple of messages here. Now, I won't be Manaso Mayor says that. Look at how time flies. This certainly is the way that the speaker has to go. The speaker has to assert himself, and tomorrow. We all live to see. And then Samira Ajete said, tomorrow will be a sweet, fantabulous Jejereje Tuesday. And then Usman also said, Eduji and the rest of the lawyers on the table, they've taken me back to my days at UCC when I was reading law. Well, you said you did business law. It's not the same as the law they are speaking. <laughs> so there's a difference. <laughs> there's a difference. Now, uh, just to climax it before I play the insert of the speaker, I have this one from uh, lawyer um, Derek Kokuabuchi and uh, sends me this. He says, Mr. Kwatin's submission is a testament that he needs practice to understand the issues at stake. Well, 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 well. He's an NDC guy, so I, I mean, well. there's no dispute to that. Uh, okay, so... He's an NDC guy, so I expected this. Okay, so it says, uh, it says, it says uh, the four MPs were in Parliament when the motion was moved. They were in Parliament when the Speaker read his ruling and ordered the marshals to escort them out. More importantly, the constitutional provisions at the core of this issue do not require any notice to the affected MPs. The issue has nothing to do with fair hearing. Indeed, their lawyers did not raise any issue of fair hearing in their argument at the Supreme Court. Has, has he read the ruling? All right. Has he read the ruling? Uh, the person educating me. Uh, no, look at the ruling. And, and, and look at what the MPP lawyers are. It, it, it's, no. it's a comment. It's which a comment. Ruling? It's a comment. No, I'm, I'm saying, saying that. Says we need the, to let the, all the, 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 the I hope there is an argument of natural justice. There is an argument of natural justice. Now, let's play the speaker's soundbite. Let's play the speaker's soundbite. Speaker Bagman. Speaker Bagman. Point out that the speaker is called upon by the standing orders of parliament, particularly order 18, to inform the house of the occurrence of a vacancy of the seat of a member under clause 1B to E, G and H of Article 97 of the Constitution. Accordingly, I proceed to inform the House that by the notification of the polls, the following members of Parliament have by their actions vacated their seats in Parliament. The members are Honorable Peter Yao Kwache Aka, NDC MP for Amenfi Central in the Western Region, now referred to as an independent parliamentary candidate for the same constituency. Two, Honorable Andrew Amwako Asiyama, independent member for former constituency in Ashanti region, now referred to as MPP parliamentary candidate for the constituency. Three, Honorable Kojo Asante, MPP MP for Suhum in the Eastern region, now referred to as independent candidate for the same constituency. And finally, Honorable Cynthia Mamile Morrison, MPP MP for Aguna West constituency in the Central Region, now referred to as independent candidate for the same constituency. These MPs cannot be allowed by law and my good self to continue to pretend to be representing people that they don't believe in and they don't have any loyalty for in this house any longer. The house is accordingly. And I clamor this with a message, also a comment from lawyer Idi Muhayuddin. Good morning to you, a great guy. He says, Roland, the speaker Ed, simply Ed, he has no business interpreting the constitution. You just play the insert. And that's what he said. Thank you, so, gentlemen. So, so, Thank you very much. Ed Dujitamaklu, legal practitioner. <laughs> and then also... Even when the speaker says he's informing... Apia he he's Thank you as well. And the then also Kwesi oh, Kwate. We're taking a break. For all those who send uh, messages, uh, we're grateful. Chief Mante, also in Akosuma, alongside your wife Vivian, all of you. Have a great time. We'll be back with sports.